were piling high Then the smile had finally faded From the apple of their eye And they were young and independent And they thought they had it planned Should have known right from the start You can't predict the end Oh, memories, where'd you go? Hello, this is WOBC-FM 91.5 Oberlin College and Community Radio. Community Radio. I can talk. My name is Ellen F. Stothew. It's okay if you can't pronounce my last name. And this show is That Reminds Me. Uh, that song that you just heard was Memories by Panic at the Disco. And now we are going to hear Let's Get It Started by Mane Skin. Context. There's no disrespect, so when I burst my rhymes, you break your necks. We get a farm in this fast, the disconnect from all intellect. Call it the read of effect, to live your inner vision, follow your intuition. Through your inner soul and break away from tradition. Cause when we beat out, the girl is pulling weed out. Then you wanna believe out, we wanna shit out. Burn it till it's burned down and take it till it's turned out. Act it up for more west it's now. Cause everybody, everybody, just get into it and get stung. You get started, you get started, you get started. Let's get it started. Control a body or soul. Don't move too fast, people just take it slow. Don't get ahead, just jump into it. Yeah, yeah, our body, your dust, people do it. And get started, and get stupid. You want me, buddy, people, we walk into it. Step by step, like you're into new kids. Inch by inch, with the new solution. They trap me, kids, we no delusion. The things are invisible, and that's how we move it off. Everybody, everybody, let's get into it and get stupid. You get started, you get started, you get started. Let's get it started. Let's get ill, that's the deal At the gate, we'll bring the bot top drill Just lose your mind, this is the time Your test is drill, just don't bang your spine Just bob your hell on me and pull deep Up inside your club or in your Bentley So get messy, loud and sick Your mom pass no more in another hat trick So come down now, do not correct it So let's get in now, let's get hacked, yeah And everybody, everybody Just get into it and get started You get started, you get started, you get started Let's get started All right, that was Let's Get It Started by Moni Skin. Uh, maybe you could tell the title of the song by, you know, what they were singing. Um, but so this show is called That Reminds Me. So I'm going to tell stories that the songs that I play remind me of. Um, so to get started, pun intended, um, I just want to say that I'm glad that I am, I am doing this show, you know, uh, this is my first show of this uh, season, semester, semester, that's a better word, of this semester. Um, so I, it's great that I am actually doing it on the day that I'm supposed to do it, because last semester, I I also, I had a, I had a radio show. I'm a first year, so that was like my first radio show. I mean, it was my first radio show ever. 
Uh, and, I mean, if anyone is listening other than Ears of Corn, perhaps uh, you will remember An Idiot with Experts, which was at 2 a.m. on Tuesdays last semester. That's fall semester, not like the winter term stuff. And so the thing about having a late, very late night or very early morning show, depending on how you look at it, is that days are confusing at that time of day. So uh, on my show last semester, I would interview, you know, my friends for whatever they could talk about for an hour. That, that was my uh, tagline. And so for the first show last semester, I was interviewing my friend Annika about the show Hannibal. So, it, you know, at 2 a.m., Wilder is closed. You can't get into it unless you have a special swipe card access, which you know, students cannot have. So I show up on the first day that I'm supposed to have my show, and I was really nervous. Um, and my friend Annika isn't there, and I'm like, hmm. So I'm texting her, she's not responding, so finally I'm like, okay, I have like five minutes before I let, like, because I got here really early to be on the safe side. So I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna like go to her room and, and knock on her door. So I did that, and she answers the door, and she's like, is something wrong? And I'm like, you, you said you'd do the radio show with me, Are, can you still do that? And she was like, oh, I thought it was tomorrow, because, you know, we're college students, we stay up super late, so Tuesday morning to us is the same thing as Monday night, and you don't realize that it's Tuesday morning until you're doing a radio show at 2 a.m. on Tuesday. <laughs> so, I, she, she, we, I, got, I got Annika, we come back to Wilder, and I'm texting the person who ha had the show before me, and I'm like, hey, I'm here at Wilder, can you let me in? And they don't respond. Text them again, still not responding. I'm getting more and more frantic. I try calling, I'm texting, I hear nothing. It's like, it's basically the time when I was supposed to start and I'm like, okay then, uh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call campus safety. You know, they, when we had our DJ trainings, they said that we could call campus safety to let us in. Not every week, but you know, just in case. So I call, I call campus safety and they're like, we can't let you in because you're not on the list. And I'm like, all right then. So then <laughs> I email uh, the program director of, of WOBC and I'm like, hey, I am trying to do my show, but I literally can't because I cannot get into the building. And so I hear back, I'll try calling campus safety. That didn't work. Uh, so then I was told, it's okay. Um, the person before you for all, had the same problem that that Annika had of forgetting that Tuesday morning is the same thing as Monday night. So I wasn't able to do my first show that week, which then of course it screwed up the other uh, people that were supposed to go on Tuesday morning that day because it, no one was in inside Wilder to let everybody else in. So needless to say, I am very glad that I actually got into Wilder to be able to, to do my show today. Um, that is always a great thing to do. All right. Next up, we have Dead Girl in the Pool by Girl in Red, and then you'll get to hear another fun story from me. So, yay for, for fun stories.
All right, then. That that song ended uh, quicker than I thought it would. Can I hear myself? Am I talking? I think I am. Okay, yeah. I can see the little, the little thingy moving on the volume on the dashboard or whatever. I don't know. Anyways, uh, this is WOBC-FM 91.5 Oberlin College and Community Radio. On a side note, if you were listening to the station since, like, last hour, uh, you must be having such whiplash, because that was, like, calm, you know, nice folk music, like, nice for when you're up super late or up super early, and now I'm I'm doing this. <laughs> so that must be fun, if, if any of you are out there that have been listening for a while. So, yeah, that was uh, Dead Girl in the Pool by Girl in Red. Uh, this song is in, I think, two of my playlists, and uh, I was listening, so it would come up in my playlist a lot when I was, like, when I would be driving to work this, this past summer, um, and the issue with that, like, it's a good song, I like the song, but the issue with that is that I was a lifeguard this past summer, um, so I really could I felt like I couldn't listen to this song on the way to work, because I felt like it would jinx me. Um, so I had to skip it a bunch, <laughs> even though it's a good song. I just, I didn't want to be jinxed. Um, and actually this summer as a lifeguard, I did have to, uh, save a couple people. It wasn't like super serious. Do not worry. I'm spoiling the story right off the bat. Um, but yeah, so I, I worked at two places lifeguarding and, uh, one of those places was a YMCA and the YMCA has a summer camp, like a kid's summer camp. Uh, and every day, well, it's only, you know, the five, like five weekdays, not the weekends, but they would come in for like two hours, I think, or maybe it was more like three. I don't know. There were two groups. There were like the older kids and the younger kids. And, uh, so they would come in for a total of like three hours. Um, and it was hectic when the kids were there. <laughs> the The first day, they all came, all the ki- the older kids and the younger kids came in at the same time, and we had to like swim test all of them, and all this stuff. And it was, it was chaotic. I was regretting, uh, you know, working there at at that moment for those three hours. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> um, but anyway, so that was the first week that the kids came in. And then the next week, uh, you know, some of the kids still hadn't been swim tested if they hadn't been there before, like, you know, just making sure. So this was for the younger kids group. And, you know, there's a couple kids that can, like, kind of swim even though they're younger, but it's like, eh, you know, should really still have a bubble. And so because, of course, you know, kids want to be included, they see other kids getting swim tested. So they're like, oh, I want to get swim tested, too. So this one kid is like, can I get swim tested? And uh, the camp counselor was like, well, have, have you swum before? And the kid goes, yeah, yeah, I've swum before. All right, then we'll swim test you. And the kid jumps as far away from the wall as he possibly can and immediately starts drowning. And I was like, ah, <laughs> jumped in, <laughs> grabbed the kid. You know, he wasn't underwater for more than like two seconds. Um, grab him, pull him out. I'm like getting out, the other kids are like, oh my god, you're all wet now, and I'm like, yeah, no kidding, your friend could have died, oh my god, you are all little psychopaths, <laughs> but, so the kid gets out, and the camp counselor is like, I, I thought you said you'd swum before, and the, and the kid goes, well, not without a life jacket, like, buddy, that's the whole point of the swim test is you can swim without a life jacket. <laughs> so that was that. And then the next week, also during uh, the little kids, t- the time when the little kids were in there, uh, another kid took off his bubble and jumped in the deep end. Luckily, I had s- I saw a bubble, uh, a bubble is like a floaty, in case anyone's wondering, uh, on the deck, and I saw a kid walking away from it, and I was like, hmm, that doesn't seem right. So I was luckily on my way over to the kid as he jumped in, and it was like, oh, he's <laughs> he's struggling. Uh, so again, I had to get in and, and grab the kid and, and get him out of the pool. Um, so yeah, that's... I, I will have many more fun stories about lifeguarding. 
fun can have quotation marks or not, depending on how you see it. Um, but yeah, more, many more fun stories about lifeguarding and such and teaching swim lessons. I also did that um, over the semester. You will hear many of them. All right. Um, you know what? I think it's actually time for a PSA. Did not realize the time would go that fast. Give me a minute. Well, more like a few seconds. All right, here we have, let me move the microphone. Sorry if that hurt your ears. That also didn't really help. I'll just move my computer. Okay, our public service announcement. Register to vote. It is valid until the 11th of October, 2022. We are very far away from that. Visit olvr.ohiosos.gov to register to register or update your voter registration. You can remember it as online voter registration olvr.ohio secretary of state ohiosos ohiosos.gov. Deadlines are April 4th for the May 3rd primary election, July 5th for the August 2nd special election, and October 11th for the November 8th general election. That was a lot of dates. Personally, I would not remember them. I am bad enough at remembering people's birthdays. Um, but yeah, there's your information for how to register to vote. And now we're going to have another song. <laughs>
right, that was uh, Jessica WJ by Kayukas, I think is how the band name is pronounced. I'm not totally sure. I actually found uh, that song through the WOBC workshop groups, uh, Pop and Rock. It's a it's a fun time. I, I joined that group last semester because I, I wasn't really sure which one to join. But then at the like full station meeting, uh, Eamon recommended that one because apparently like a bunch of weird uh, songs come through there. And I was like, that sounds hilarious. I'm going to do that. Um, and yeah, I, I would say he was right. I mean, yeah. I mean, I have uh, a uh, <laughs> a playlist that is called Re- uh, Rejected Bops from WOBC, and they are bops, and they were also very rightly rejected from being added to our vault. <laughs> also, sorry if I'm breathing very heavily. I feel like I do that sometimes. Anyways, that was Jessica WJ. This story is a little uh, more tangential, not super, like, related to to that song do I well I was about to say I don't know anyone named Jessica but actually I do know a, a fair fair number I know at least a couple I know at least a couple Jessicas um but anyways this story is not about a Jessica this story is about my mom's friend named Karen Ann uh so well my mom has a friend named Karen Ann and when I was little I distinctly remember thinking that she was two people named Carrot, like the vegetable, and Anne. I don't know why I thought this. I mean, I think my parents tried to correct me that no, it's it's not. Well, actually, I don't think they even knew that I thought that she was two people. I think, (laughs) I think my parents thought that I thought that she was one person named Carrot Anne, but I distinctly remember thinking that she was two people. Because I met her one time and I was like, well, I guess this is, and then, you know, my parents were like, this is Karen Ann. And I was like, okay, so this is Carrot. Where's Ann? But no, it's, it's just, it's just one person named Karen Ann. No vegetables here. Um, very sad. I do like carrots though. Carrots are one of the vegetables I like. Fun fact about me. When I was little, I liked broccoli and now I do not like broccoli anymore. Same thing with cauliflower. It's really weird. I don't know why. I don't know why I'm like that. You know, growing up, I always heard, oh, you don't like broccoli now, but when you're an adult, you will like broccoli. And I did the opposite. So, I don't know. Maybe it's some kind of Benjamin Button situation going on. Who knows? <laughs> um, but yes, that is the story of my mom's friend, Karen Ann, who I thought was Carrot and Ann. And I thought they were married. I thought they were two people, and I thought they were married. So that's another fun fact. <laughs> I almost had a, a hyphenate, like a two-name name, a hyphenated name. I was almost named Mary Ellen. Uh, and then my last name was almost uh, Worth hyphen of uh, like both my parents' last names. Uh, but my parents decided that would be a bit much. So instead, I just have, oh, what does that sound? It just went like woo through the headphones that was weird a bit of panning action unintentional panning action oh it's happening again okay i don't hello i hope this is working i don't know what that was about maybe it was just me maybe if, if you are listening to this oh ears of corn because you know hopefully you're not a human that is awake at 3 30 in the morning you know um oh my god it's doing it again maybe i just need to not move my head that would be a thing but yes, so now we've heard about Karen Ann, my almost name, Mary Ellen. Fun times, fun times. Okay, next up. Oh, wait, it's, well, it's 3.30. So I should say, this is WOBC FM 91.5, Oberlin College and Community Radio. I'm Ellen of Stothew. It's okay if you can't pronounce my last name. And the show is... That reminds me where I tell stories that I am reminded of by the songs, sometimes tangentially so, like in that last uh, bit. But I really like that song, so I really wanted to play it. You will also be hearing more from that album. Kayukas is the band. All right, that's enough talking for now. I'm starting to lose my voice. Well, not really. Well, it doesn't matter. 
Another song time. Here we go. String lights hang off the back porch. Just sing like we did on the 4th of July. Miss that song. Snuck it upstairs and Bo cried on the floor and said, I'm so scared of growing up. Well, maybe I know what it's like. That was String Lights by Peter McPoland. Uh, he's a, a musician that I discovered, I think, over the summer um, on on TikTok. Well, I don't actually use TikTok. It was on Reels, the, you know, the fake version of TikTok <laughs> on Instagram. Uh, but yeah, I, I really like his music. Um, and I think he's actually coming out with an album maybe next month, even sometime in April. So I'm really looking forward to that uh, for one. <laughs> um, but yeah, I really like that song, you know, slow it down in the middle of the show. It's, you know, nice and nostalgic. Uh, I've been feeling very nostalgic recently, you know, lots of existential crises. Very fun. <laughs> so, the story I have for this song, taking it way back with the nostalgia. This is nostalgia for, like, high school in this song. I'm taking it back to kindergarten. Remember that time? <laughs> So, in kindergarten, I had the best kindergarten teacher ever, Mrs. Farrell, 
uh, I think she retired a few years ago, so it's sad that other students will not get to appreciate her, her teacheriness. Is that a, that is not a word. Um, but yeah, great teacher, Mrs. Farrell. And in kindergarten, you know, you're learning sight words and the alphabet. I don't remember. I, I wasn't paying attention much in kindergarten. <laughs> um, and so we had a wall full of all the sight words that we were learning that year. Just like flashcards on the wall for the... That's the only sight word I remember learning in kindergarten. <laughs> it built a solid foundation for me, though. Now I can read so well, and I'm so great at coming up with new words, like teacheriness. That's, that's the kind of stuff that kindergarten sets you up for. It's words like teacheriness. <laughs> so we had a, word, uh, a wall full of all of our sight words, and I decided one day that I was going to write. We also had a writing station, and I decided that I was going to write all of the sight words down on a piece of paper, and it took me two days to do. Two full days of writing. Well, not full days. Two full uh, free time periods of time <laughs> to uh, took me two of those to write down all of the sight words, because it was pretty late on in the year, and we had a lot of sight words at that point, you know? On the grind in kindergarten. And so finally I was done with writing all of these words and I brought it up to my teacher, Mrs. Farrell, the best kindergarten teacher ever. And she said, wow, that is a lot of words. And she wrote that down. Wow, that is a lot of words. And uh, me being the plucky five-year-old that I was, I was very shy, actually. I'm still very shy. I don't know why I did this. I went, I can read that obviously, because she just read it out loud. Um, but she went, you know, Mrs. Farrell, great kindergarten teacher, went, oh, okay, show me. And so I read, wow, that is a lot of worms. And she went, what? Looked at it and realized that she had accidentally written, wow, that is a lot of worms. <laughs> so then she proceeded to write, whoops, I meant words. And then she drew a bunch of squiggles. That is a lot of worms. So that, that was a fun experience that I had forgotten about until like earlier this week when I was deciding what stories I would be telling in, the, in this uh, show. There is something fuzzy under the desk. I think it's insulation, but I keep brushing it by accident. You did not need to know that. <laughs> All right. Here comes another song. We're going back up beat though, so get ready for that.
All right, that was Tiger Feet by the band Mud. By the way, this is WOBC-FM 91.5 Oberlin College and Community Radio. I'm Ellen of Stothew. It's okay if you can't pronounce my last name. And this is the show that reminds me where I tell stories based on the songs of things that the songs remind me of. I need to figure out a, a clearer way to say that. Headphones are still being weird, doing that like back and forth panning thing without uh, intentionally uh, doing that. Also, it's time for another PSA. Yay, I love PSAs so much. You can say that too at home or wherever you are in the car. I don't know. I, I, yeah, I don't know where you are. I know where I am, obviously. Public service announcement. Don't get hacked. This is valid until the 31st of December, 2022. Uh, I mean, I would hope that it would be valid forever. I, I don't think anyone ever wants to get hacked, but valid until the 31st of December, 2022. Then it's okay to be hacked. So don't get hacked. Hackers continue to try and find new ways to trick computer users. The FBI recently issued a security advisory alerting businesses to watch out for fake letters from HHS, Amazon, or UPS containing USB drives loaded with malicious software. So if you get a random letter that you weren't expecting with a USB drive, uh, don't plug it into your computer, I guess. All right. So yeah, so that was Tiger Feet, the song Tiger Feet by Mud, which has a, f I have a fun story for how I found that song, which is that, hold on, how do I tell the story? Okay, so me and my friend were staying late after school, uh, me because I had a uh, jazz band rehearsal, my friend was staying late because they were staying late, um, <laughs> I think because the bus was wasn't until later. And so we decided we were in the same Spanish class and we decided to do some Spanish homework together. And at one point, my friend was writing whatever sentence that included, this is on the computer, that included the phrase, se mudaban. You know, it's, it's moved. Um, however, the computer did not like that. Google Drive, Google Docs did not like that and underlined it in red. So we're like, hmm. You know, I wonder what it thinks that Semudaban should be. I mean, the computer wasn't like in wasn't calibrated to Spanish or anything. It was calibrated to English, so like makes sense that it was underlined in red. But what what does it think it should be instead? What does the almighty computer know that we do not know? That PSA actually timed really well with the story. <laughs> I did not plan on that. Computers, computers, there we go. Uh so the computer said that instead of say mudaban, mudaban should become mud band. I have never heard anyone say mud band. I don't know why you would say mud band. You know, if you're outside and there's a lot of mud and you're like, oh my goodness, this is such a mud band. Um, I, I don't know. Personally, I, I would not, I don't know, call a, a strip of mud a mud band. I'd just call it mud. And I would probably avoid it because my shoes get very dirty very easily. I, I just go through shoes like crazy. I don't know why. My feet just do not want to be contained, I guess. <laughs> so the computer suggests that we say mud band instead of mudaban. So we decide to look up what mud band means because neither of us have ever heard of a thing called a mud band. And we look it up. And it, it's like, it's not a phrase. You know, I would not use the phrase mud band. Apparently nobody else would either. Nobody's using the phrase mud band. Um, <laughs> but one thing that did come up was a Wikipedia article for a band that is called Mud. The band that we just heard a song from, Tiger Feet. And so I was curious because I was like, well, this is a band. It is called Mud. That's got to have some some interesting music to it. I don't know. So I, I looked them up on Spotify, listened to Tiger Feet, which I'm pretty sure is their top song. That's a song that we just heard. So yeah, that was that was Tiger Feet by Mud Band. It's just called Mud, though. It's not called Mud Band. <laughs> I mean, that would be cool if it was called Mud Band. If it I mean, they're a glam rock band from the 70s, so it would be weird if they read our minds in the future, but you know, 
glam rock bands are weird. They can be weird. They can do stuff like that, maybe. I don't know. I've never been in a glam rock band, and I probably never will be in a, in a glam rock band because I cannot read minds of the future, and also because I uh, can't play any instruments that would be useful in a glam rock band. <laughs> I can play the saxophone, used to be able to play the piano, not not really so much anymore. I've, I've kind of forgotten, like, everything. I've also forgotten the bass clef, which is an issue. I mean, it's not really an issue, but, like, if I needed to play the bass clef, then it would be an issue. So, that is something. So, yes, that was my, my story of how I found the band Mud. We might hear a few more songs from them over the semester. You know, they've got they've got some good songs. At one point I decided like this was gonna that Mud was gonna be one of the main bands that I listened to. So I, I started looking up like stuff about them. Cause you know how people like to, you know, gatekeep and stuff, uh, and know things about the bands that they're into. So I decided to look up Mud Band. And uh wh- well, I didn't find much, because I don't think they were particularly popular. You know, if you're listening to this, I I doubt that you have heard of Mud before. So, but one thing that I did find about them, I found an article that I think some British knew, they were also British. Mud Mud is a British 1970s glam rock band. (laughs) So, um, yeah, you know, I, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, so I found an article Um, about this old lady in a nursing home who could, um, she, (laughs) she could, like, she could only walk when she was listening to songs with upbeat tempos, such as Tiger Feet by the band Mud. Um, so that was the, I mean, that's interesting. I don't know why that is. Um, but yeah, so she can walk when she listens to Tiger Feet by Mud. I mean, maybe they were more popular in England than, than here in the U.S., so maybe it's, it's not super out of the way to be into Mud over there across the pond, but yeah, I mean, good for her, and that is also the most information that I could find out about Mud. (laughs) All right, we have... Oh, next we are going to be getting into some musical theater, which is always a time and a half. Here we go. I love him, but when the night is over, he is gone. The river's just a river. Without him, the world around me changes. The tr- 
memories are there and everywhere the streets are full of strangers. I love him, but every day I'm learning. All my life I've only been pretending. Without me, his world will go on turning. A world that's full of happiness. Sam was a hard working man, one beneath the archer's eye. He loved a girl named Fiona who seemed to butterflies. Sam gave Fiona a diamond ring, he said, I know how much you like pretty things, and she kissed him. Fiona said, Sam, I love you too, but how do I know your promise is true? She began to cry. He wiped her eye and he said, Fiona, Fiona, I see you in the deepest, reddest, pinkest colors of a bleeding heart. You're a supernova, as reflective and distant and mysterious and radiant as the stars. And he said, if I should someday die, keep this ring to remember me by. Now back in those days, it was against the code for a peasant to go with such a fine lady. Fiona was arranged to be betrothed to a duke who was grotesque and lazy. But Tyler Sam had a secret plan to poison the wine of that sorry man. He wrote a letter. Spritzed the envelope with his cologne and slipped it under Fiona's door and then he hid. She opened it and it read Fiona, Fiona will take a life or two an island far away from duties and demands. We'll found a utopia where you're writing poems and music and escape the laws on forgiven hand. And he said, if I should someday die, keep my ring too. and radiant as the stars. Fiona, Fiona, I see you in the air before it leading crystal sterling silver rain. Fiona, Fiona, I swear the apples of your cheeks are never, ever, ever gonna fade. But seeing as I'm going to die, keep my ring to remember me by. Remember me by Remember me by 
All right, got an extra song there because I uh, went to go check if the next person was there and did not make it back in time. That's okay though. Um, but yes, uh, we only have three minutes left until the next hour, so uh, I don't know. I don't think I have time to tell a story. So I will leave you on a cliffhanger, a story about Les Mis, about when my high school uh, did Les Mis. It was an interesting time. It, hmm. <laughs> I did a lot of tech theater in high school, and tech theater is a very different experience than the actors in theater have. The actors, they are the true theater kids. The theater kids, trademark. Tech theater kids are much better in my opinion, but I am a tech theater kid, so I don't know how much uh, you want to take my word into account. Uh, but yeah, but then, okay, so what were the songs? They were On My Own from the uh, motion picture, Les, Les Miserables? Was that a good French accent? Probably not, but Les Miserables? Maybe that was better, I don't know. Uh, the, the motion picture. I don't like Les Mis. That's my uh, musical theater hot take, is that I do not like Les Mis. <laughs> so that's something. What else? Um, let me see. What else can I talk about for the next two minutes? Oh, this is WOBC-FM 91.5, Oberlin College and Community Radio. Might as well get that in. Uh, so that was the song before. The song that played just now was The Ballad by Sasha Paris Car Carter. Sasha Paris Carter. There we go. He was a student at Oberlin. We are not friends. Um, but, well, yeah, no, we're not friends, but I follow her on Instagram. Them on Instagram, my apologies. I follow them on Instagram, and uh, they posted the song on their story, and I was like, hmm, I'll check it out. And then I checked it out, and then I really enjoyed it, and now it is here. So that is something. Yes, we have one minute left. A race against the clock. What else can I get in? What, what final words shall I leave you with? I do not know. I am not good at uh, big dramatic statements, I guess. I don't know. Maybe I am good at, b good at big dramatic statements. I don't know. This has been a fun hour. I am going to try to go to sleep now. Luckily, I do not have a class until 1.30 tomorrow, 1.30 in the afternoon. So I, uh, I do not have to do anything for a while. I get to sleep in, which is always lovely. I love sleeping in. It is my favorite hobby. What else? You know, there are clearly people awake right now because the Spotify is open on the computer. And I think you can't hear me anymore. Goodbye. <laughs>